Okay, Kelly. Hey, I'm going to go over your swing uh, evaluation yesterday. This is the swing you walked in with. This is you warming up, and this is your comfortable, natural swing on the left. I got Nellie Corda on the right, and I know she's a young tour pro, and like, I don't know, six foot and hits it crazy good. But we're just looking at the sequence, okay? We're just looking at the sequence of events, and you're actually closer than you think. So I'm going to take you back a ways on your swing. Everything looks good here, good rotation, really good position there. So I'm going to take her back, try and put her in a similar position to where you are here, okay? Going to get her just on the downswing here, maybe one back. So pretty similar positions here. You rotate it out. She's got her lower body a little more quiet. It's a little bit back here. It's That's fine. Don't worry too much about that. I actually like rotating the hips and the chest out, get a little bit of a bit bigger backswing when we do that. So... Now we're going to look at some key positions when we come down, okay? So you start rotating down. I like where your weight distribution is here. You're a little bit right over the ball, which is good, kind of covering really good. And we're going to put you in about right when your glove hits your trail leg. And I'm going to do the same thing with her. I want to kind of get down here when your glove's on her trail leg. Right about there. So you can see the difference. The lower body looks pretty similar here for you and her, but the difference is... You're letting that right wrist release a little bit here. She's still in that same position she was at the top of the swing as far as this club and the angle it has between here and here. You've started to lose this. So now when we come down to this angle between your shoulder and your hand and in the golf club, your club should be at least horizontal in this position. And the only reason it's not is because subconsciously you're getting ready to hit the golf ball with your arms and you're letting your wrist release early so that it's completely extended at the golf ball. So we're going to walk you down a couple more positions, and you're going to see that by the time you get to impact, you're having to pull your elbows in right here. Both of them are bending, and that's because this extension that you're doing early is creating havoc with you trying to find the bottom of the ground at the same place every time. So you're having, you're getting this club too extended too early. So if you don't pull your elbows in, you probably hit about that far behind the ball. She's not going to do that. She's going to turn down from here. And her right elbow's bent. Her left arm should still be fairly straight. And if I can get her, she's a little past impact. But even here, you can tell by the time she's in a similar position to where you are, she's a little more rotated out here. And the club, with her hands right over the golf ball, the club's still behind her. With your club, with your hands right over the golf ball, your golf club is now contacting the golf ball. So let me clear these lines and show you what I mean. Hands right over the ball, club right over the ball. Hands right over the ball, right wrist is still waiting to extend. So she's not going to flatten out that right wrist. Yours is flat way before you get to the ball. It's still flat. You're pulling your arms in. She's going to extend that and flatten that right wrist out in front of her, that direction. So the reason both of her arms straighten out there is because she didn't throw early. Now you're rotating your body pretty good here. So you are moving through pretty well. You just got to get rid of this instinct to throw at the ball rather than to throw later. Okay, now here, I'm going to put one more thing up. You're going to find it a little bit interesting because you did say your chipping was good. Well, here's why. Okay, now we're going to look at your chip shot. You just got a little sand wedge in your hand, about halfway back, which is good. Watch the difference now as you come down into this, how you hold off better. Now when your glove hand hits your trail leg, you're seeing that you're not fully extending here yet. You're not starting to throw the club. That's why you're making better contact on your chip shots and your, your full shots. Let me clear those lines. Have you come down here by the time your hands get over the golf ball? This time, you've still got some angle left here. And then as we continue through the hit zone, you can tell that by the time you get into the golf ball here, you're in a much closer position than you were before. So if we get her back, I can't quite get her in the same position because of the speed of the frames. But if I put her right here, and I'm going to go back where your hands are just over the golf ball, you're going to see that you're much closer here than you were with your full swing. Your hips are opening up. Your right wrist isn't throwing. You're keeping your hands much more dead. And then when you extend here, you're not having to take your elbows and pull them in. Look how straight your arms are through here. Same thing she's got there. Now she's making a full swing on an iron swing, so she's going to have more speed. But the bottom line is your chipping move is much better than your golf swing. 
So you need to start practicing chipping, but just chip harder. Just make that same chip move, but just think, okay, I'm going to put more power into it. And when I say power, you're going to get that power with the ground up, not with your arms and certainly not with throwing your hands at it. I'm going to give you a couple videos that we talked about for training. Let's go to work.